what I'm looking at in this video is um, the corporate structure taking over um, sort of the public sector and some of the negative impact that that's having. I'm using this hospital as um, an example because there's a recent case of a patient being dumped in the car park but it's happening in public health care anywhere where there is public health care but this is the Antelope Valley Hospital it's gone to their annual audits the last one was June 30th 2018 2017 I've already got that open here and um, if you have a read through it there's a lot of information in here it's um, 64 pages in total but you just see that it's so corporate. All it is is about corporate, 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 making money, reducing costs, making money. And, um, yeah, they reference a lot of government payors and reimbursement. So basically what they get is uh, like a grant. They get the funding going in. Then they spend that, and then they have to justify their expenditure to get reimbursed. And they also have to justify any extra they're going to need. And there's like a tick box system for them to meet the criteria required to get the reimbursements. Which then has an impact on care and how they treat people. As I say, this is just one example. It's somewhat removed from my situation because it's in America. So therefore I can look at it a lot more analytically as opposed to looking at directly my sort of region in the UK and being bothered by the actual impact of what is happening. But like in this situation, if you work from the bottom of this section, this is, what is this? I think that's page, it says 11 at the bottom. So page 11, it says 12 in the top corner there. But um, from the bottom here, what is it? Um, the Medicare value-based purchasing program includes measuring process of care measures, patient experience measures, patient outcome measures and efficiency measures. The district continues to work diligently to improve upon these quality metrics which reduces the risk of reimbursement cuts. And one of the things they're measured on is um, quality of outcomes and readmission rates. So I'll just read that whole section now. The government payors have slowed on spending growth, which is tempering top-line revenue growth. You see, that's a corporate phrase. On top of the 2% sequestration cuts that were put in place in 2013, Medicare is looking for additional ways to cut costs by focusing on bundled payments, which considers a patient's full continuum of care, and quality-based reimbursement models which reward healthcare providers for their contribution to producing better health and penalising providers who are not able to improve quality outcomes and reduce readmission rates. So then putting that all together, it harms them financially as a business operating like a, a corporate entity for them to have an outcome that doesn't satisfy the tick box system or for them to have readmission rates so if you've got a person who's got an ongoing illness they've got a, a lifelong condition they then will have um, a constant sort of rate of readmission but they need to reduce the readmission rates so that they can look good on paper so how's that got anything to do with caring how's that got anything to do with health care how are they actually looking after the patients? So then when you're getting these cases of people being dumped out of the hospital, they're not even admitted into the hospital. They might go in and be put in a wheelchair, left in the, the waiting area, and then wheeled out and dumped. Because the hospital will lose out on their government funding as a result of that person being regularly readmitted. And it really does just come down to that. It's a... Uh, it's a business model. It's not healthcare at all. And it's happening everywhere. It isn't just this place. But 
you go through it and there's just these constant references to um, like growth, cutting costs, and the government payors and or payers, depending on what word you use. And it, it, it's just absolutely stupid you know district continues to focus on ways to improve top line revenue growth reduce expenses and maintain fiscal discipline you know, that's corporate speak that isn't public health care but just a note on this particular hospital for anything that's uh, relevant uh, the voters of Antelope Valley approved Measure H creating a separate 501c3 non-profit entity governed by a nine-member board comprised of five elected district board members, three community members and a chief executive officer. The separate non-profit entity is known as Antelope Valley Hospital Incorporated and will operate the hospital through a transfer services agreement and have financial reporting responsibility to the district. The authority to exercise an agreement is in place, however, no decision by the district has been made at this time. Contacting the district's financial manager, the financial report is designed to provide the district's patients, suppliers, community members and creditors with a general overview of the district's finances and to show the district's accountability for the money it receives. Questions about this report and requests for additional financial information should be directed to the direct the district's administration by telephoning six six one nine four nine five five three three. And then we get into the start of the breakdown of everything, and it's all laid out and it's all public because it is a public hospital. And then you just sort of start looking into what they're actually saying and how they say it, how they structure what they're saying. And it just, it's madness, because this is happening in healthcare, wherever you are, whatever city, state, country, wherever you are where there's some kind of a, a public healthcare system, they're getting employees in and people to manage the process who have a corporate background. They're not coming from a healthcare background at all. And the more that any kind of system is decentralised and it sort of becomes its own entity operating under its own rules within its own kind of system within itself, the more and more detached it becomes from any kind of healthcare and the more and more corporate it becomes. But that's somewhat what the government wants that's what they're putting in place and then also with that by having such a decentralised system it isn't the government that's held accountable or in England the NHS it comes down to the individual trust or local authority so then there's even more pressure on that unit within that region to cover up any mistakes any wrongdoing or anything because all of the accountability will be on them which again leads to even worse healthcare. And when you are mistreated, there's nothing you can do because it ends up being your local authority investigating your local authority to find out that your local authority done absolutely nothing wrong. It's like the police investigating themselves, you know. If I was to investigate who the best chef in the world is and I was the only chef that I was investigating, I would find out that I'm the greatest chef in the world, you know. If you have an in-house investigation process, then you're not going to find that anything went wrong in-house. It's just absolutely ridiculous the way that things are dealt with, the way that things are actually investigated, because there is no actual accountability. It ends up with the staff doing everything they can to not be accountable, to put all the blame on the patient, to blame anyone else but themselves because they can't afford to take on that accountability and it just becomes a process of madness you know, there, there is no care in health care there just simply isn't and no one really wants to accept it except for the people who are being mistreated but then once you get to a point where you're being mistreated 
there is absolutely nothing you can do about it because there's no one there to actually listen but as you can see everything they spend is accounted for laid out made public because they are a public hospital they come under the title of district and they keep using district here there and everywhere district with a capital D so they are public because of the meaning of the word district <laughs> no matter how much people want to try and deny it or run away from it or try and claim that people don't know what they're talking about but there's a lot of information here a hell of a lot and if you get the time to go through it you'll start sort of seeing it for the reality of what it is it's that that corporate structure that is infecting all the public systems and it affects how those public systems operate it affects what you actually get from your public services and there's no real I don't even know how to explain it there's no real kind of public services anymore really all you've got is these corporate bullies who in their normal corporate workplaces there's a hierarchy there's a structure there's a rank and you have to go through all these preset tiers and it all has to be done in a, a business like way and you have to talk to your line manager who talks to the supervisor who talks to the manager who talks to the the company manager who talks to the CEO and it all has to be done in that way so then when you're getting someone who's up those levels within the public sector and you have every right as a person to talk to them you have every right to have their time you have every right to raise your concerns to them ask your questions they don't want to do it like that because they want you to follow the structure follow the structure follow the structure but it's their structure that's their contract that's their policy that's what they signed up for and that's how they have to deal with each other within their working environment it's not how we have to deal with them so people really do start do need to start looking into how things are funded why things are funded how things are run what your actual rights are and once you know that that is you're right you know that you you are due that service you are due that kind of care whatever it is that that service is meant to offer you then keep pushing to get it keep fighting for it because they cannot take it from you it doesn't matter how you go about it really because the restrictions the policy the guidelines the protocol and procedure whatever it is does not lay on you but you walk in there and they treat you like you're beneath them you know they treat you like the cleaner they think they can tell you whatever to do this that the other because they see the cleaner as bottom of the ladder but that's not the reality to some extent you stand above everyone now and you need to feel that empowerment with yourself and use that to achieve what you need to achieve 